is going to talk about security. And is security hard? Hello. Pink? OK. Hello. Uh, so in this talk, I will talk. Uh, I will analyze several uh, applications, several big big construction applications, from the security standpoint, or rather, their vulnerabilities. This will be a little bit technical, but I will try to make it as approachable as possible for general audience. So don't run away fearing uh, technicalities. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Martin, and I'm at this. Sunil handle, oh, looks like pointer doesn't work. Uh, uh, the laser pointer, I mean. Yeah, so I'm Kiksunil on GitHub and also Twitter, but I'm not actually on Twitter. And you can you can see my avatar there, so if you see it, it's, pr it's probably me. Uh, regarding this talk, uh, I am security enthusiast, but I'm not security professional, which means that I don't spend my full time uh, researching security and doing pen testing, but I do spend significantly more time on thinking about security and, and related things than most developers do. And I'm certainly not a cryptographer, so if you think that I will help you analyze your cryptographic application, sorry, I can't do that. Uh, the structure of this talk will be such that I, I will start with some obligatory disclaimers. Uh, we will look at several vulnerabilities, there is the list of them. And uh, I will try to figure out, like, or rather suggest some ideas how to improve the situation of Bitcoin security. Okay, so disclaimers. Firstly, the point of this talk is not to shit on other projects or, or various projects. Uh, everyone makes a mistakes, including me, it's normal. And to underline this point, I want to share a story of my most embarrassing security vulnerability that I caught. So I was working at some company and we got a report that our product wasn't checking PLS certificate when connecting to the server and also the client used some library that was vulnerable to some remote execution attacks. So if you install the product and you try to log in, uh, it would just compromise your computer if there was an attacker on this network. This wasn't written by me, that this was written before I, I joined the company, but I was tasked with fixing it. And this was in, in C-like language, and those of you who are developers know that C-like languages are terrible at security because like you have to do all these various checks in uh, in your head and you if you mess up I it's very easy to mess up and if you mess up uh, then someone can attack you but i was aware of this property of c at the time and i was very very careful and ab absolutely did not introduce any bug in uh, that was related to c but i spent so much time thinking about this kind of bug that I forgot to compare the uh, common name, which is uh, like the website name or, or server name to the one in the certificate. So basically you could send a different certificate that was valid for a different site. So you could spin up a new site like waterrobot.com and then you, you would um, uh, use uh, Let's Encrypt to to get the certificate and you would supply this one. Thankfully, uh, there was not much private information going on in the, in the connection. I think the password that was generated for, for the user, so no, not much of a problem, but uh, it felt embarrassing. So even I, and at the time I was already deep in security, so I knew about these things, but still, happens. So it happens, don't, uh, don't shit on people for making uh, mistakes. Maybe shit on them if they do it in critical applications repeatedly and don't learn from their mistakes and, and repeatedly have bad security practices. Maybe then yes. Okay, let's look at LNURL pause. Does anyone know what it is? Okay, great. N new people will learn about LNURL pause. This is this 
nice application or rather device that uh, allows you to pay. Oh, nice! There is someone who has it physically. So th this device allows you uh, someone to accept Lightning payments without them having an internet connection. But how is that possible? Well, it abuses the connection of the uh, payer. So, so this is how it works. Well, unfortunately, the laser pointer doesn't work, which sucks, but I hope you will figure it out. So the device shows a QR code to the smartphone, which contains LN URL information. The LN URL encodes various details, uh, and th this is read by smartphone with compatible application, and the smartphone understands that it needs to send a request to the server containing this information, and uh, what is in the information, uh, like some imported parts are encrypted pin and encrypted amount. And then server, uh, well, uh, after you pay the invoice, uh, server sends you invoice, then you pay it, and if all succeeded, then server sends back the response with the decrypted pin. So you can uh, read on, on your phone application the description that says that this is the pin, and you tell it to the person who is operating the post. Also, there is a dif different scenario where you can uh, pay uh, for a vending machine and you just enter a pin code into, into the vending machine. So uh, that's how it works. Uh, yeah, so, so you, you then use human speech to, to transfer the information back in case of post. And it looks good, right? Yet there is a vulnerability. Can anyone spot it? I will give you a hint that uh, some of the terms I used are sometimes overloaded to mean something more than what they are norm what they were originally used, but I didn't overload them right now in this talk. Can anyone spot it? Okay, it was this is just an experiment if anyone knows. So encryption doesn't mean authentication. And here's the problem. If you have an uh, the encryption that was used there work like very similar to mathematical addition. It's not exactly the same. If there are developers, I will just say that it's uh, exclusive or, but it's totally similar to addition in some properties. So you combine the data you want to encrypt with some secret masks. If the mask is somehow computed from private key, it's not very uh, important how, and you get the message. And then uh, mes if so uh, someone doesn't know the data, nor the mask, they cannot f uh, figure out what they are from the message. This is, this is great. But the problem is, if you know what the data is, then you can figure out the mask by simply subtracting. O of course, I'm simplifying the here, but, uh, but actually, uh, the irony is the, the exclusive or operation is even simpler than s uh, subtraction. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to bother you with thi this part. And then you can add your own bad data. And you, you get some different message, which is basically valid. The server will accept it, but it will contain your data. So what's uh, something interesting that you would like to change? Pardon? Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, no, there is no recipient in the data. Yes, amount. So. You will pay. You want to pay for something that costs ten thousand satoshis, and with this you change it to one satoshi, send to the server. Server will send you an invoice for one satoshi. You pay one satoshi, and you get the pin code. And you will tell the person the pin code, and suddenly you bought something with one satoshi that should have cost ten thousand satoshis. So the solution is of course signatures. So you just sign. And uh, to be uh, to g give you a hint uh, for for developers that want to look into something like this, actually they used something called uh, message authentic authentication code or hash based message authentication code. It's pretty much almost same uh, as signatures. It has a little bit of differences. If you are a developer uh, and don't know it, look into it. This is something you you could use in your application if you if you ever do something like that. But yeah, basically if you sign. Then it's all right. Okay, let's look at another vulnerability. LND verification script. So uh, 
LND has this scheme where they sign their binaries, and uh, well, if you ever uh, like verified software that you download, I, I'm, I, I mean, you should verify all software in principle, but I know that if people find it hard, so some sometimes they don't, and sometimes they, they get wrecked. But uh, uh, if you know that manually verifying is annoying, so the authors of LND created a script. And the idea is that the probability that the attacker will attack you the moment you are downloading LND the first time is pretty low. But with each update, it gets higher and higher and higher. So if you, uh, if you want, uh, you can save this script somewhere else, and then you use this script again and again to, uh, to verify the, the binary. So if you succeeded the first time, in getting clean binary, which is quite likely, or rather cl clean script, then you can use it. Or if you don't find this sufficient, either hire someone capable of an security analysis or be the one capable of security analysis and look into the script, which was my case. I wanted to read the script, whether it actually works and does what it's supposed to. So the basic structure of the script is get the version, download signatures and keys from, from some GitHub and servers and what, what not, and then count the good signatures because it, it was basically an N of M, like multi-sig, which is really good for security. So count, count good signatures and compare them like, okay, let's say there, there is like five developers and it wants at least three signatures. It will, uh, it will accept it if there are at least three. and and not accept it if there, there were less. So it looks good on the surface, but as they say, the view is in the details. So what it actually did, that the get version was worked by executing the binary it was trying to verify. So you are trying to verify if the binary is malicious, but you will run it to ask which version you are. Hey, yeah, people are laughing, this is kind of like really sad uh, stuff, like doing this. But as I said, I did similarly bad shit. So, you know, it happens sometimes. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the anything that you did after that is totally irrelevant because I if you ran the binary, it's already too late. So, uh, but let's say like, okay, like this is pretty simple to fix. So let's look at the rest of the script. So suppose it, this was fixed. How would it work later? So then I noticed that it downloads the metadata and it trusts the server. It downloads the metadata from any uh, GitHub. Maybe maybe they are good. I don't know. I, 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 but there could be someone uh, compromising them. Some internal developer. Maybe maybe some LND developer could be compromised and uploaded something bad to the server. And uh, yeah, there are there were multiple subtle ways they could. Uh, subvert the signature verification. To be fair, th this was no, uh, the trust was kind of like impl implicit. It wasn't obvious that it is trusting because there are some very weird ways things can go wrong that just people didn't think about. Like th this could happen. And, and so, so it wouldn't occur to you that this is actually trusting the data be because it looks like mm, this is fine. So yeah. But uh, there was another part, and I wanted to check that part as well. Cou counting good signatures, but if you were compromised LND developers, you could update, uh, upload your signature multiple times as a different file, and it didn't check that your signature was checked only once. So, of course, if you if you upload ten signatures, then you yeah suddenly it's ten ten, ten signatures, but you only one person signed it. So. That was pretty, a pretty nasty bug. And then uh, there was one thing. Suppose you, you fixed get version by reading the binary somehow magically by, by some magic program and reading the, the version of that. It still has one vulnerability and this is not very well known. It's version downgrade attack. So I, I want to say a bit more words about it for developers so they don't screw up this part. 
And so, so the idea is hypothetically, if there was a vulnerable LND binary, which there was, we know that there were security vulnerabilities in the Lightning itself or other implementations. So, so if you had this uh, already vulnerable binary that was already signed by developers in the past, you could uh, ju just su supply that and the script would have uh, downloaded the old one, the vulnerable one, and then as an attacker could attack you on the lightning layer. So that is also a pretty bad attack. And, and uh, if this happened, you are screwed. And I f there is not a very good automated way of doing this. Or, well, you can, what can you do is if, if you already had it installed, you have some check that it's a greater version than the previous one that works. But for users, they just need to input the version and they need to find from different sources which version is the latest one. So uh, that's pretty important part. But yeah, it's less known, known kind of bug. So I wanted to shout out about this bug. And of course, solution is, it was written in Bash, which is terrible language for security if you are handling untrusted input, so it sucks. Unfortunately, it's probably the only language that uh, can be relied on being on an any system and without having to do cross compilation and very, very complicated shit. So, yeah, it sucks. So probably we can't say that replace it. I mean, if you can, great, but probably we can't. And so be paranoid. So hire someone who really knows Bash really well to audit you and, and, and something maybe, or learn Bash really well yourself, or although you will probably want to uh, pull your eyes out because of how shitty the language is. I uh, spent a lot of time in my young years reading very crazy shit in Bash, so that's how I learned. And it, it was fun, it was crazy, but at least it wasn't like production ready, security critical stuff. It was m my own thing. So it can it can be nice for, for things, and if you do simple applications, it's, it's, it's fine. But for this part, for this, this thing, like t signature validation is crap. Okay, there was another one in LED. And this is more like a risk, not a really like super terrible vulnerability. Uh, it was in the initialization, initialization of LND. So, a, a, as you may know, that when when you first initialize LND, you will have to supply the password and you will get back the seed. So, uh, but it doesn't uh, authorize you whether you are the one who is supposed to connect to LND. But it, it's fine because there are no secrets, right? Like when you are connecting the first time, there is nothing there, and, and you cannot screw up anything. Well, not entirely. If you have like some combination of events, uh, this could be used to attack. So, this is scenario for attacker. Find out who is initializing LND right now. So, thi this is kinda difficult, but I think it could be possible. Like, if someone like says running LND on Twitter, which is quite popular phrase, then maybe maybe this person wrote this tweet before he initialized it, and maybe you can find out who uh, server of ho who it is. Maybe you have access to the same device, which maybe because you in, uh, you created some application on Android device, or maybe it's usable on iPhone. I don't know. And maybe maybe it can somehow connect to LND that is maybe backing the Breeze application or something. I don't know. So. It could be possible that you somehow find out that someone is initializing LND. Let's attack them. So you connect to this LND and you uh, supply your own seed or just do the initialization and the LND will tell you, tell you the seed. And then the user tries to initialize, but it's already initialized. User may be a bit confused or, or maybe if, if this is behind some nice UX, Maybe the user is not confused because it's he's presented with some address. He sends the satoshis, and he didn't realize that he didn't see the seed, and he doesn't necessarily know that he has to see the seed. And th then it, it doesn't occur to him that maybe he didn't see the seed because the attacker already initialized it. So then attacker profits. So solutions. And this is the good one for everyone. 
if your wallet didn't show you a seed, don't send Satoshis there. Like, it could be because something screwed up, maybe, maybe it could be some attack or whatever, and you would be surprised. If, if, if this is sounds like totally obvious to every one of you, you would be surprised how many people actually like forget to see the seed or don't back up or, or send when they just saw part of the seed. This happened multiple times, I saw it. So don't do this. This is like good general advice. And in case of LND init, you, uh, you can use the command called LND init. So that's a good one. Um, let's look, so we don't have time. Oh, she. <laughs> <laughs> Last minute. Okay, so I will try to briefly say like, so there, there was another one, uh, all these vulnerabilities so far I found. So there was another one in RTL where basically I it enables you, if you logged into another application like uh, like BTC pay server, it can log you into RTL without having to authenticate another time. So it writes a secret file somewhere that this is passed around basically. And the problem is if write fails, then LND will read back the empty file. Because for instance, disk is full, which happened to me actually. So uh, RTL read back empty file, so then attacker can just send empty secret and, and he's in. And you should use atomic writes, uh, at, uh, like you write temporary file and then move it over. Look it up if you are a developer. And there was this bug that uh, wasn't discovered by me, but I helped analyze it and th this guy actually was 10 million sats, unfortunately. And this looked by, uh, this worked by basically uh, attacker charging high fees. And mm, LND, I hope, is popular enough, but the problem there was that LND is correct to reserve the fees, LND is correct to check the amount, and but it uh, made a RPC request to LND to send the, um, the uh, Satoshis, but it didn't specify the fee limit, so the attacker could just uh, crank up the, li uh, the fee and he would uh, attack you. Yeah, so, so here is the scenario, he has to do some rebalancing, but it's pretty simple and have, have two or three nodes. And so yeah, security is hard. And the question is what we can do. And I hope still have some ideas, like have more reviewers, maybe maybe create some kind of security team that will be crowdfunded and, and we'll like look uh, at these applications. And mm, here are some tips for for developers uh, to, to think about, like if you are a developer, maybe, maybe try, try these tips. So hope this last minute, minute br brief stuff is good enough. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. I mean, maybe we have uh, time for one question for Martin. Yep, there. Wait, wait, I'll, I'll bring them the mic. About the version downgrade bug, uh, I think package managers can solve it. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, definitely. If you can use package managers for any software, use them. They are great, awesome solution. You will not uh, have to face all this shitty bash crap and various other issues and problems. Package managers are great, and I actually work on packaging Bitcoin software for Debian. So, so maybe you could check that out on my GitHub. Thank you. Okay, so now I want to invite uh, to the stage uh, Breitpol. Uh, culprit? It's coming, it's coming. Let's give him a warm welcome. 